Today we're talking about the new preview Death Guard fortification. Yep, that's the one with a slightly silly name. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking about the preview for the Death Guard Miasmic Malinifier, this little plague chimney that was shown off in one of the previous reveal videos. I'll be honest, when I saw it tease, I was fairly sure that Games Workshop were going to give it one of their strange copyrightable names, and they most certainly haven't disappointed. No plague chimneys or plague furnaces here, this thing is most definitely a malinifier. It's going to be coming out alongside the Death Guard Codex for 9th edition, which we do know will be out in December. We know that the Lord of Virulence will be coming out alongside that as well, but no details on anything else as of yet. Model-wise, I'd certainly say it fits in with the rest of the Death Guard range, disturbingly slightly organic, and certainly not the sort of thing that I'd want to get too close to. Rules-wise, Games Workshop have teased that it's going to have an ability called Putrescent Fog. It's an aura ability, and it means that when friendly Death Guard units are within 6 inches of it, they gain the benefit of light cover, or if they already had the benefit of light cover, then they become minus 1 to hit, and interestingly enough, that does seem to apply to both range and melee. Honestly, for an already durable army, it's quite nice to have yet another layered durability buff to make the Death Guard even harder to remove. It should certainly make Plague Marines or Terminators a lot more tanky, and could be really good when combined with the Mephitic Blight Hauler, which can already give them light cover. That means that with one of these and also a Mephitic Blight Hauler nearby, you could have Terminators that are saving on a 2+, plus, get plus 1 to that saving throw, and also minus 1 to hit without having to invest in any Psychers or anything. I think its main problem though is that it's a fortification, which is going to make the buff a bit limited, as it's obviously not going to be moving around. You're only going to get those very nice defensive buffs in a 6 inch bubble around it, and as the rule states wholly within, you're not going to be able to daisy chain back to it either, where potentially you could have let your squad advance, and then maybe just keep one model just within its aura. I think for Death Guard, the main issue is that they just don't have any infantry that really are going to benefit from this well. Plague Marines and Terminators are generally fairly short range, they're going to be happiest advancing up towards the midfield to try and take central objectives. You might want to leave some cheap infantry units back to defend home field objectives where they could take advantage of this, but whether that's a small squad of Plague Marines or maybe a squad of Poxwalkers perhaps, I just don't think it's going to be enough points cost to justify you including this thing to protect them. I'm sure it'll cost at least a fair amount of points and you might have been able to take double the squad rather than including this fortification. I think what Death Guard would really like to be able to use with it is something like Havocs or other heavy weapon troopers. If you actually had a gun battery with a whole load of las cannons or obliterators perhaps, you might be able to justify the extra outlay to keep them really safe. I guess it could be useful for protecting a whole load of Death Guard infantry on turn 1 before they start moving up, but even then, if you wind up going second, it's not likely to have all that much effect. It's just kind of frustrating to see such a powerful buff be really quite hard to make use of in an actual army. We know that it does have a couple of other special rules, it somehow either debuffs or damages nearby enemy units, which I imagine that they'd probably have to get quite close for. And when it's destroyed, it has the potential to go up in a putrid explosion, which hopefully might have some sort of special rule, which means that it doesn't damage Nurgle units and only damages other units. Otherwise, it could be a bit of a liability to the things that it's trying to defend, if you're essentially putting a big bomb in their midst. So of course, we will have to wait to see the points cost and the full rules for this thing, but in terms of it being a competitive option for Death Guard, I'm not exactly holding my breath. As is often the case, we'll have to wait and see until we've got everything revealed. So let me know what you think of the model and the rules down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I'll be hopefully doing a full review of the Death Guard Codex once it comes out. Finally, if you'd like to help keep these videos coming, I'd just like to mention that the channel does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons get to see a few new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and entry to the channel's regular prize giveaway which happens each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, feel free to check out that link. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.